we live in the age of abundance of caution. That's it, abundance of caution. People are not mature enough to ask, what price do you pay for all your caution? That's the question that is unasked. You understand, my dear friends? That's the, that's the issue. Abundance of caution exacts a certain price. People who are very cautious about not going with me or on their own to Israel for all of my broadcast career because they want to go only when it's quote-unquote safe to go. So they lost out on a trip that they wanted to take. I don't care. I'm using Israel as an example because so many people want to visit and because uh, that is considered by many to be more dangerous than a trip, let's say, to Spain. Caution, like everything, exacts a price. Asking what is the price immediately has you leave the left. There is no price paid for the left. We will take over everything. The government will take over as much as possible. There is no uh, price. We'll keep printing trillions of dollars. There's no price to that. That's, that is the left-wing mind. Do what you want and never ask, gee, is there a price being paid? Does society pay a price for that policy? Keep printing trillions and lie about what you're spending it on. The infrastructure bill is about a third about infrastructure and two-thirds about the Green New Deal. The spectacular nonsense of the, of the lie of the existential threat of global warming. Existential threat. I don't deny the globe is warming. I deny it's an existential threat. There is a huge difference. And then they don't debate. They just call you a denier. That's it. You're a denier. Why debate you? You racist denier. Once again, I should make, I'm should making this appeal every time I remember to do so. Do not wear a mask in public. You will make America better. It is, a, it is a blow for truth and science against the CDC and the Democratic Party, which wishes to control your life irrationally. The acceptance of the American people, of the extinct, uh, extinguishing of their businesses, has been one of the more sobering realizations of my life. Here's another one. People in Minneapolis elect Democrats. I feel toward Minneapolis, which I have visited at least 25 times, and have tremendous affection for. Let me just say this in advance. I do believe in Minnesota nice. I've been to the Minnesota State Fair more than almost anybody who lives in Minnesota. I have a big uh, audience there. I spoke at the great uh, orchestral hall in Minneapolis where my dear friend Manny of the Minnesota Orchestra, one of the great orchestras of the world, played uh, the Star Spangled Banner before the event, first trumpet Minnesota Orchestra. So I, I have a tremendous affection for Minnesota. Plus, we have a, a disproportionate number of donors to PragerU who are Minnesotans. Terrific, terrific human beings. Now, having said that, I feel toward them as I feel toward the issue of the righteous in Sodom. It's an amazing debate that Abraham, the first monotheist, has with God when God wants to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So Abraham, and this is the greatness, one of the greatnesses of, of the Bible, the first believer in God argues with God. The word Israel, the name of the Jewish people, Israel, means, and this is also in the same book, Genesis, it means argue with God, fight with God, strive with God. Israel, Yisrael, El is God, Yisrael is to struggle with. You'll learn all that in the Rational Bible. Third volume is coming out this, uh, this fall in September. 
please pre-order it. It's Deuteronomy. It's as big as Genesis and Exodus and is important. So at Amazon, you could pre-order it. The Rational Bible. And, I'm, and those points, of course, are made in Genesis. So I feel toward Minnesota, in, in a sense, the way the Bible depicts Sodom, and not Minnesota, really, uh, Minneapolis. They they elect vile people, and then the their city is ruined because of the vile people who run their city. So do I just believe this is just the deserts, or does my heart go out? Well, my heart goes out to the terrific people who are clearly a minority, and the fools are the majority. Well, let me read to you what's happening in uh, Minnesota from a man called Michael Tracy. One year after George Floyd, Minneapolis is Murderapolis again. It would be foolish to not notice the comparatively minuscule attention other instances of unjust killings receive. <clears throat> if one unjust killing, Floyd generate sustained, historic, society-altering attention, and hundreds of tha or thousands of others generate virtually no attention, the reasons for that disproportionality have to reflect something about a society's cultural and political priorities. This is especially true in Minneapolis, where the tumult of the Floyd episode and its fallout has now lasted for nearly a full year. Because it simply cannot be disputed that the prevalence of unjust killing and violence in the Twin Cities area has vastly increased since last summer's protests and riots. Minneapolis recorded its second most homicides ever, ever, in 2020. After only 1995, when the city was ignobly dubbed Murderapolis in national media. And the trend has continued to escalate in 2021. Between January 1st and April 25th, the number of homicides increased by 92%. That's basically doubled compared to the same period in 2020. So wait a minute. If 2020 was the second most murderous year in Minneapolis history, and this year has already doubled the rate, this will be the most murders in the history of Minneapolis this year. Thanks to the Democrats, solely thanks to Democrats, and people will re-elect Democrats. So why should my heart go out to the people of Minneapolis? Because there are, like in Sodom, 50 righteous, well, there weren't in Sodom 50 righteous people. But I am torn to see people get what they vote for and, and deserve. Well, back in a moment. 